We good? Damn it. Yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good. All right, man. So, hey, guys, uh, just wanted to continue the conversation. Keep in mind, I was using Zoom, the free version, and the the free version is 40 minutes. (laughs) So I might as well go ahead and upgrade it, pay for the upgrade version. But I just wanted to continue the conversation. Definitely, uh, I uh, invited Bacchus and No Excuse to continue the conversation. These guys are true veteran in the game with over at least close to 100 countries visited between all three of us. So uh, we just want to sit down and just continue to have the conversation about changing the uh, false narrative of why and, and how black men are traveling. So again, let's let's start with Bacchus. Bacchus is very uh, out, outspoken. So speak your mind. <laughs> uh, the, be- the best way I think we could change what we see is by being the uh, being what most people talk about is being the anomaly, showing showing something different. Long story short, just, let's just show something different. We all know what everybody else is showing. You know, show them more that there is more to the place we go. Whether it is a, a main hub for a party, whether it's a Cancun or whatever, there's still places you can go in Cancun that is uh, uncharted. So I say be more, be more out and open to to explore things that have yet to be explored, and change the narrative that way. I think that's the the best way. Uh, just showing more, showing something different. One of my favorite models is a uh, tour by day, whore by night. Nobody needs to know what you <laughs> do at night. You sh- and and just enjoy yourself. Go back once, twice, thrice. Make some friends, make some more friends, and then ask those local people. Where do the locals go to party? Because we yeah. know we all know the locals can't afford what the the what what we can. So where do the locals go to party? And really show them a lot of love and appreciate it. Most definitely learn the language. They love that. No matter where you go, this is universal uh, knowledge. That's my way of how I try to uh, show something different and do something different. I totally agree. And no excuse. What are your thoughts? Um, my thoughts is um, I was thinking about this as well. So let's let's talk about some of the narratives, right? Yeah, it, re- it revolves about. around education too. So you got you got these old old narratives. You know they want to throw HIV and STD statistics, but you know if we can if we if we start comparing, we need to we need to probably do more talks or post about comparing the U.S certain cities in the U.S. versus these cities that we see, you know, um, let's say STD rates or HIV rates. So, you know, because there's false narratives around that. And then there's this false narrative about black men, you know, I'm just going to say black men, especially that we're going to these countries, you know, to hook up with underage women, which is false. And, you know, because the false narrative is that these countries have a, a lower age of consent, which I was trying to do my research with some of them, with some of them state it do. But if you go in Colombia, if you go to any of these countries, you'll see signs posted everywhere that say, um, you know, no, my, you know, I mean, no minors. The age, it's, it's, it's clear that people visit in that country that they know the age of consent is, is 18 everywhere. So men are not, men are not traveling, um, you know, what I mean, I, men are not traveling to to hook up with underage women, you know, or involved in anything, quote unquote, pertaining to sex trafficking. So I think that's a false narrative. Um, I think it's purposely put out there to scare taxi because on Twitter, you know, that 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 guy that was posting all his travels, I seen like I seen politicians posting legal statutes. I seen I seen people actually in in government official I seen government officials tagged and responded to this. You know that's that that is that is that is and and that was that's intentional. That's intentional. You know so um, but yeah more things about education about travel because a lot of people are ignorant and then the last thing I will say is when you say someone. When you when you accuse when you say these women are doing things for a bag of rice, where 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 are you getting this from? You know, 
it, we shouldn't even have to be addressing that, you know, because we know it's ignorant from the from the jump. A, a, a bag of rice. Come on, man. I, I definitely want to chime in on that, man. This this whole and a lot of brothers say this a lot, you know, for one, you know, calling these girls mangoes. I think that's so offensive, man. It's like, I mean, really? <laughs> I mean, you calling people mango like a name of fruit. It's it just, I understand there's a code behind it, but it doesn't just make any sense. I mean, I guess for me, once you get close to the people and you learn the culture and you realize like, hey, listen, there are no difference from them to us. The only difference is that we got dollars. That's the only difference. At the end of the day, they still got, they still got feelings. They still, you know, they still think for themselves. So for us to go out there and think that we're greater than the next one, we need to stop that. And, and two, it's just like, I, I don't know, man. It seems like this whole microscope with, with, with black men and how we move is so scrutinized. It's like everything we do is scrutinized. And it's like, why? And it's just like, if we're so sorry, and we're so pathetic, and we're so, you know, we can't do nothing for ourselves, why are you so concerned how we move? If if you if you if you feel like you know you could get better men from other races, then don't worry about us. Let us do us. Let us do our own thing. But it seems to be like the way a man travels is like, oh, you can't do that, and they start throwing all these lies, like lies. There's other races of men that've been doing this way before black men. Black men just started traveling. We just started getting passports. So for them to make these these crazy assumptions that we're doing this overseas. It's just a bunch of lies, and and I, and, I, and I, I'm at a point now where I'm gonna start speaking up, man. Like I'm glad I'm, you know, Bach is, is inviting me to other podcasts, and I'm gonna start speaking up and correcting these these people. They assume that you know black men are traveling for these reasons. No, we're traveling for a peace of mind. We're traveling for for to explore our options, business, personal, and sometimes we just trying to just to get the fuck out of here. People don't realize how stressful we are as people. And it's just like, you know, sometimes, but when we get on that plane, it's for us to save ourselves from ourselves, you know? And it's just like, we don't know the amount of level of stress that someone's going through. When that person get on that plane and he, and he, and he got his feet on the sand and he's looking at that ocean, that's his peace. But somehow he's being ridiculed for doing that. Oh, you're going over here just for that particular reason. It's like, no, there's other reasons on why this country has a lot to offer. Like I, I remember one time, you know, this girl I know, you know, she's Dominican. And, I, and she knows I go to Dominican a lot. And she tried to embarrass me. They're like, oh, yeah, I know why you go there. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, she said that in front of other people. Like, a way, like, she tried to, like, embarrass me. And I'm like, yo, I had to, like, push her, you know, take her, not push her to the side, but, like, grab her to the side and, like, let her know, like, hey, don't ever do that shit to, to me again. Because, you know, damn well, so I've done more for your country than you ever done. I brought clothes school supplies i've done things that people don't even know because you know what i don't broadcast it to the community what the fuck have you done to for you for your for your people in your own country so for you to, to even try to embarrass me or i only go there for one reason i'm like don't say that dumb shit that don't don't ever i checked it so hard man and then i looked at a man like yo i feel like punching you for your damn for, for for her behavior and it was just like you know and it's just People just think that you're there to just use other people, and that's not the case. You'd be amazed. A lot of black men have done a lot for these for these people in these countries. We just don't talk about it. There's people out there, these expats out there, you know, giving like orphanage money, bringing school supplies, Christmas toys. But you know what? None of that's advertised because guess what? We don't do it for our ego. We do it because we want to help. And trust me, black men are more inclined to help the locals than any other foreigners. And that's a fact because I've seen that. So this whole false name that we trying for one thing, that's a lie. A lot of black men are going overseas, opening business, buying land, opening schools, starting families. And the thing is, you don't hear about that because all you see is the, are the YouTube videos that you see walking streets of Sasua. And it's just like, there's, there's more to... There's more to these countries than what you see on YouTube. Trust me. And, it, and a lot of the good content that it's on YouTube, it's not getting looked at because you know why? Because we're not getting the views. We're not falling to this, what, um, the, the algorithm, uh, no excuse. So a lot of your content, a lot of my content, 
even a lot of stuff that Bach is doing and some, a lot of stuff that other members in the groups are doing, like flip flop and so forth, their concert is not being looked at because you know what? It's not it's not drawing attention because it's not falling on, under that algorithm. But there's a lot of things that a lot of black men are doing in these countries that we're not getting getting credit for. So I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, I, sorry I, about I that. I want to just chime in real quick. Uh, I, I'm, I'm probably going to mess up this saying. Mm-hmm. Probably going to mess up this saying, but a lie would reach halfway around the world before a truth would get his shoes on. What that basically means is the, the bad stuff, the negative, the, whatever feeds into whatever you want it to be, you hear that a lot more than what it actually is. So the guy going to DR uh, for girls to, to do whatever, everybody will see that video more than the guy going to DR bringing school clothes and teaching kids and books and helping the community, et cetera. That's not sexy. That's not enticing, and that's not what most people want to see or hear. When they hear they go someplace, they want to know about all the the, the all the fun you've had and in whatever yeah. aspect that is. And helping kids and helping communities and whatnot, that's not fun. That's not where they're coming from. Most people travel to, to escape and enjoy mm-hmm. the most they possibly can for the least they possibly can. And unfortunately, it's a lot more of that than anything else. So that's probably why. And, and for the thing about the mangoes, I only use that term or refer to that term if I'm talking to one of the homies in a group setting or at work to kind of keep it peachy, <laughs> kind of keep it under. It's never as a disrespectful form. It's just like, hey, yo, how the mangoes are out there? It's like, oh, they're pretty tasty. You know, we could talk and... <laughs> Without getting in trouble, we're not doing it intentionally to to her demeanor or 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 talk that or talk down to, to anyone. So I just want to throw mm-hmm. that out there. I, I see we have another gentleman, uh, Ahmad. Ahmed. Ahmad. Hey, how y'all doing, brothers? What's going hey, on? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing all right, man. Thanks for joining Bernard, the call. Bernard, yeah. Rob, what's going on? What's up, brother Backus? What's going on? How y'all fellas doing, man? So yeah. I'm coming from, from the yeah. gym, man. Look. I got <laughs> so, uh, I can smell you from over here. You're sweating in the sun, bitch. He getting lean up. for the. He getting lean for summer. He trying to hit them real streets and. <laughs> you, better, hey, you better believe it. You better believe it. Hey, man, but uh, like good topic, man. And uh, you know, like I said, changing the narrative, man. Uh, I was in the military five years, Navy, active DOD in Afghanistan. You know, and uh. We come back to the States, man, and it's what we have and what we actually receiving, man. The juice is not worth the squeeze, you know. So uh, I've been traveling. I'm happily divorced. Let me say that. But uh, we get out for peace of mind, man. And then the, just the total level of femininity that we sometimes run across is just it's breathtaking and mind blowing, man. You know, for a person that it's always stay on the grind, you know, stay on the grind, mm-hmm. stay on the grind, you know, uh, just need time to focus in on yourself, man. And we, I'll go to the moon and back if peace and femininity is there, brothers. You know what I mean? So I've been in all kind of bad situations, good situations. But when I go to Columbia or DR, man, I'm at home, man. So I'm going to enjoy, enjoy every minute of it. I don't care what, what they say. I block all of it. I block all of that out, man. I'm just happy to be able to get outside the matrix, brother, make my bread and just stay out the way, man, and enjoy myself, you know? Well, one, well, trip, one trip at a time. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, when you tell people you're going overseas, right? Like, do they ever say anything out of pocket to you? Like any like any slick way, like trying to degrade and why are you going to these countries? I mean, of course, because it's it's, it's the lack of information. It's just a total level of ignorance that they yeah. they they speaking upon. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. for a person that never been out of the country or just maybe been, you know, traveling locally, of course they don't know, you know, what, what's really going on out there. I met some of the most uh like well-rounded people in some of these countries, man, you know, and then you come back to the States and it's just like a headache, you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah they, they, well, they come up from a place of ignorance because they haven't, you know, crossed, crossed over, you know what I mean? I mean, so that's just kind of what it is, man. It, it's, it's kind of funny. Um, you know, I'm part of multiple, uh, I'm part of multiple Facebook groups, travel groups at that. Mm-hmm. And a lot of co-eds, and it's amazing how like people don't think that these countries have doctors, mm-hmm. lawyers, 
engineers. They think only the U.S. have that type of profession. They think everyone lives in huts or living somewhere in the Campo area in dirt roads. And mm -hmm. I'm like, do you understand that these countries got middle class, upper class, mm -hmm. elite class universities? But mm -hmm. they never think that because they so they have their own perception of these countries because they're so stuck in the resort that they never really branch out and see how the locals are living. And even yeah. with, within the local society, there are classes. There's the upper class, middle class, low class, the working class. And mm -hmm. it, 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 it amazed me when I speak to especially women, black women, they're quick to like think that, you know, every woman out there is struggling. Every, mm. you know, every woman out there is like, they need the dollar. No, there, there are a lot of women in these countries don't have no desire to come to the States mm -hmm. at all. They like, yo, I'm good over here with my family. As long as I got, I got my house, I got my property, I got my car, I'm good. Because mm -hmm. you know what? I'm not trying to be stressed out living in the States. So it's interesting how. People think that, you know, when they think of these countries, Colombia, DR, uh, Brazil, Costa Rica, that everyone is like living and struggling, waiting for that American dollar. They don't realize that there's a group, there's, there, there are classes out there that they have no desire to come to the States. Like I've, I've met people like, you know what? I'm good on the States. You guys look like y'all going through like hell. Mm -hmm. And and plus the, the, the focus of family. The, the, within the United States, we don't focus on family. And it's like, people don't want to leave their family. I got to take care of my mom. I got to take care of my dad. You know, I got to make sure my nephews and nieces are good. I don't want to leave. I mean, as long as I'm good here, you know, I, I, like I'm dating someone right now in Dominican Republic. She's telling me, yo, come to DR, live in DR. Like, she made it clear, I don't want to come to the U.S. I'm good. She came and visit. I took her to New York. I took her to Houston, took her to Chicago. And she was like, oh, hell no. I took her to Washington Heights, man, in New York, man. She was like, oh, fuck no. Nah. <laughs> like, I'm good. I'm good. Staying in the countryside in the campo is like, hey, I got my house, got my land. She she just recently bought land. She's building a house. It's like, yo, I'm good over here. If I feel like going to the beach, I can just walk to the beach. You know, and it's just like they think that every woman overseas want to come here to the United States. Now they always referencing the, the what's, what's that show called? Um, the the Night Day Fiance. fiance. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you coming for that green card. She's going to use it for that green card. Do you understand? There are tons of women have no desire to come here. They're like, yo, Rob, please stay here in Columbia and cut the hand with me. I don't want to go to the States. And now we're in a position where based on our profession, we could actually live overseas with making U.S. dollars. So it's just kind of interesting how, like, you know, people are always thinking that black men are traveling, for, are traveling for one particular reason. But yet they don't know tons of black men own businesses in these countries. Tons of black men own land. We own fucking fertile land where mm -hmm. dudes are growing, like dudes have farms in these countries. Guys starting businesses, call centers, hotels, restaurants. These are black men that are producing. But yet the narrative being taught in this country is that black men, we don't do nothing. We don't do anything. We worthless, man. And it's like a black as a black man, you get tired of hearing that to the point where it's like, you know what? Fuck this shit. I'm going to go overseas and go to a place where I feel appreciated. Where I feel love, and it's just like you know, I don't want to feel like arguing with you all the damn time. Mm -hmm. like, you just block every, you just block everything out, man. You yeah. know, you deflect with the foolishness, you know, with the ignorance. Because, like I said, they don't understand what they're talking about. It's completely over their head, man. You know, so I can care less, man. You know, but like <laughs> I said, the 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 narrative is out there for the negative. But like you said, the positive is is really hard to. To, to for them to fathom to see that you're actually happy, man. You know what I mean? Because I've been traveling, and I, and I'm I'm still uh, new at it, you know. But but going down south in like Dominican Panama and Colombia, but they just they really don't understand. So yeah, it's hard right. to talk to somebody when they can't even comprehend. You know what I mean? Comprehend properly. So so what do you think? Well, I'm gonna ask you this: when they say, "Hey, the only reason why you're going overseas because." <laughs> You can only have, you know, you can only get ass overseas. You can't get ass in the states. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> my, my last two, uh, two uh, girlfriends or uh, American girlfriends, both of them were nurse practitioners. One had a double masters, worked, uh, and I'm in the Houston area. Mm -hmm. uh, one worked in, uh, what was it Texas Children? The one before that worked at a, 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 a hospital in the Clear Lake. She working on the doctorate. I mean, it's it's nothing to really, you know talk to a woman with you know education but you know i mean 
like I said, it's not really worth it, man. You go overseas, you know, you ain't got to do the headache. You know, it's <laughs> hey, you know, I like to tour. I'm, I'm kind of like an Indiana Jones a little bit. I do the little tourism, like <laughs> uh, twelve o'clock. Uh, you know, twelve o'clock when I get up early in the morning, try to get my workout on. Start doing my first tours. If I'm in a different city around, you know, 12, 1 o'clock after that, game time. Let's get it. You know what I mean? So, we, <laughs> you know, night. yes, sir. You know, so, you know, have a little fun, you know, but I, man, I try not even to listen to it, man, but I'm going to enjoy myself, man. Life is short. You know, mm. we never know the day where we're going to transition out of here and we just got to, you know, you know, like what, you know, like Kevin Samuels, man, you yeah. know, that. The Godfather, man. You know, I didn't agree with everything the brother said, but from a, a standpoint where he was just trying to open the world's eye of what's going on, particularly with our race, you know what I mean, in the U.S., man, and what's going on with, you know, our country and stuff, man. I don't have time to to try to re I'm I'm getting the passport, bro. I'm out. You know what I mean? So that's just what it is, man. Uh, no excuse. Being a little quiet there. <laughs> oh, no, no. I was just... Uh... I was just uh, listening, man. Yeah, man. We we just we gotta we just gotta focus, man. And, and you you brought up something that that kind of um that's true, man. As far as about trying to get certain narratives out on YouTube, you know, I'm understanding more and more about you know working the algorithm and things. But I mean, it it it, it takes time, especially when you build it when you build it from the ground up, and then you don't have other people putting you on a platforms that's bigger because that mm-hmm. that's that's what gets everybody everybody a jump you know what yeah. i mean so when you just when you when you're doing it with no help you know what i mean you you really you re, i mean not not that you have to but you know people is doing things like going after other people creating drama i don't you know what i mean i don't i would i don't want to go down that route to yeah. try to gain traction but that's what that's what a lot of people do to try to get um you know to try to get their name in the out al- get their name in the algorithm you know but, um but outside of that man I think also too is that more more men more 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 especially black men more black men have to get wives because 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 ultimately with women in the United States is they're they are saying that Black men don't want to get married any. They're not looking for wives anyway. Mm. So why, why should we even? Why should we even try to, you know, make ourselves wives or or advertise let ourselves? Me, hmm? Let me let me let me fight you on that. Go ahead. A lot of brothers aren't trying to be husbands stateside. Hmm. There you go. I have. I would love a wife. Yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't love one stateside. Sure. We can be friends, we can be buddies, fuck, we can be roommates. But I ain't putting my name on paper next to yours in the court and the state. Mm, not stateside. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. I'll get married quick, fast. Please. <laughs> stateside? Forget about it. No yeah. dice. No uh, dice. You, you I have seen uh, work out positive for anybody in my life. Go you know, ahead, it, it, it goes back to what Kevin Sanders was saying. A lot of people are not built to be married. They've never been taught to be a wife or a husband, even brothers. A lot of brothers were never taught. I mean, a lot of us didn't have father in the home. So we don't have a general idea for us how a husband should behave or how should a father should act. I mean, I'm just speaking, speaking honest. I, like, I, I was raised without a father. Mm-hmm. So it took me a while to understand the value of, becoming, of being a man. Like understanding what is your role as a man, not just being that tough guy that you know quick to get in the fight and whatever. Like taking care, of, you know, taking care, of, taking care of your responsibility, but also understanding that you know it takes a lot just in being a man, just based on what society thinks you should be. And for me, I would love to like when I attended your wedding, Rob. I ain't gonna lie, man. I was kind of like, man. I, I feel like white. No, yeah, like, man. I was like, man. I'm like, I feel like yo going to the man, damn. Be a double wedding in that bitch. I yo, going to shop and just pull one of these girls and just like, right, hey, you know what? Woo. I'm gonna take this shine away from you, Rob, and just get on one knee. Hey, I don't know your name, but I'm about to marry you. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, 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 we try to. I ain't gonna lie. Me and Kim was like. <laughs> 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> but but um i mean as far as like i see myself getting married man i mean honestly look i had an amazing time the past seven years traveling the world having a good time you know but a side of me do wants to have another kid a side of me do like the the whole coming home to someone that's I, i'm more the the relationship type of guy versus Tradition. being a single guy yeah, yeah that, that's that's more of me but again, it's finding the right woman to do to do that with. And it's sad to say in the States, man, a lot of women are not built for that. Well, but like you said, we uh, most of us come from a business background. Yeah. And from a business standpoint, it don't even make sense. You know, I was in court uh, speaking on my particular situation. You know, I was married 13 years, man. And I was in court two years trying to get a divorce, man. So it's from a business standpoint, it's not even worth it because the laws are not here to help us. They are here to hurt us. I would reach out to any young brother and say, give them my advice or my spirit. If you want to do it, I'm not saying they don't have a magnitude or a big percentage of women that wants to get married and really got their heart and mind in the right place, you know, for lineage, you know what I mean? And a legacy. But man, all they got to do is uh, wake up one time and say, I don't want to do this shit no more. Then you fucked. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> sure That's it. Yeah, so um, I was looking. I did this poll in, in your group, man, a while back, and I did one in my group as well. But the um, the outcomes was pretty similar. So when we talk about changing the narrative, we do gotta we do gotta take a look in the mirror because I think I asked. I don't, I don't know if you guys can read that, but I asked, um, "Are you?" And the first one is pro mongering or pro play for play, pro having children in another in a foreign country, pro marriage in a foreign country, anti marriage in the U.S., anti having children in the U.S. So number one, number one was pro mongering. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to have a little fun out there. <laughs> you know, so I mean, the I mean, if we if we if we use this as a narrative. I mean, one would debate, one would say most most guys, you know, mo I would say most guys travel to monger. Mm -hmm. Most, you know. So, so that, 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 and I, I would like to believe. Sorry to cut you off there, Rob, but I would like to believe ahead, these are guys new to the game because if you're home mm -hmm. doing a nine to five and whatnot, and you see your buddies out there, Rick Ross in it, loving it doing all this stuff. When you first get out there, we all know our first time Jeez. out there. We lost our damn mind. Yep. We didn't know we were like, <laughs> what the hell? And it's going to take a while for us to get that out of our system. The more you've right. been pent up, the more you've never not been nowhere, it's, it's going to take a minute. Whether you're getting that same kind of love stateside or not, once you get someplace else and you realize you could, you could realize you could VIP like you in downtown Atlanta which will cost you 20 grand for the weekend. You could do the same thing in Medellin for $400. Oh, hell. <laughs> you don't know what to do with yourself. <laughs> yeah. But I, I will say the second set, the second set, you know, guy, it, it, it was a lot of guys that said they were pro marriage or pro, um, or pro having a child in a foreign country. I mean, keep in mind, no excuse. Um, even Kevin Samuel, the, the late great Kevin Samuels, he even said black men want to get married. Mm -hmm. He said that he said he stated this many times: black men want to get married. It's like it, because because a lot of us were, were raised not in families, so we wanted to make sure if we if we had a kid or you know we decided to start a family, it was the the best way to do it was to get married. The thing is, like what Kevin Samuel used to always say: who always fought for the divorces? Mm. Women who yeah. initiate the voices, women 75% women. Majority of the time, the man will try to do whatever he'll try to do whatever it takes to avoid that situation. Oh, there it is, another Kim Samuel moment. <laughs> Look who came in, yeah. We got to put it out for the girl for yeah. The artifact. <laughs> where, 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 where you think this setup came from? My, my suit's just in the dry cleaner right now, otherwise, it would have been. <laughs> but this whole setup was most definitely inspired by him, bro. I mean, I got my lighting right, I got my lick on the side, I ain't got no red book. I mean, fuck with it like that. You know what, guys? <laughs> you know what, guys? You know, this is this is awesome. I'm glad we're having this conversation. Let's let's talk about the impact Kevin Samuel left behind. 
Wow. What do you guys think? What, what, like, what's going to happen next now? Like, you think someone else is going to pick up the mantle? Or the, the movement is going to actually going to start? I mean, what's going to happen who, now? Who has the credibility? Because right now mm-hmm. what we're seeing is women throwing parties, laughing, Party. enjoying themselves because he finally gone, gone. Oh, he wow. died alone too. Yada, yada, yada. That is the most sickening, yeah. messed wow. up thing to see for human beings to praise regardless of what. He, not like he was Hitler. They'd rather <laughs> Hitler stay alive than Kevin. He did a lot for me. So I'm always going to hold something. I'm in mourning right now. Mm-hmm. I can care less about what anybody else thinks. Mm-hmm. I can care less. Whoever. Anybody do something for me, I appreciate you, and I'm going to mm-hmm. hold you in high regard. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you club baby seals on the weekend, but if your your guidance helps me in my life to do better, mm-hmm. Rob, you I was a hundred pounds more than I am now. Ken, you know this. Yeah, he's helped me to realize I need to do better to get better. That's the only way it's going to be. But men are willing to take the responsibility. Some, most, damn well, they're all. Women are not. They just want to manifest the shit, whatever. I'm still listening to his old stuff. I'm glad mm-hmm. somebody put that he has over 800 videos yeah. that we can go back and look on. I hope to God because he's gone. YouTube does not take it down. If that's the case, I'm going to freaking download the fuck out of a damn thing and keep it for myself. But like he says, chew the meat, spit out the bones. Who's going to take his place? We're going to have a lot of fakers, fronters, women, and everything in between. Yeah. But it's up to us to carry the word within ourselves and the guys that we teach, train, or whatnot, we, we, we show them what they didn't see. I have one young man, uh, Isaiah out of D.C., that I'm showing the way of, of the ropes. I already showed my cousin A.J. how to do this. He's living his life. He's enjoying it. He's traveling on his own now. It's up to us as the older OGs who have done it, messed up, fixed it, to keep passing that on. It does mm-hmm. not have to be only your offspring, but the young guys in the groups every week, every week, I'm new to yeah. the game. Somebody tell me something mm-hmm. to, to, to take somebody under your wing and show them the right way. We don't have to fix everybody. Mm-hmm. If every one of the OGs fix even one, mm-hmm. that makes a difference. And that's something that Kevin's always said. He's like, it's you don't have to do change 100%. Just changing a few alone, just moving the needle just a little bit is a start. It's a snowball effect. So that's how I see it. But for who's going to take his place, I think we all should take his place. There we go. That's a good answer. In our world, in our own little circle, if all of us who love, respect, liked what he did, et cetera, et cetera, just take, just change one person's life. That's it. You you, you don't got to start a whole YouTube. You don't got to do all he did. If every one of us who rock with him change one person, pass that down, I think you I think you'd appreciate that. That's my one thing I took away from Kevin Samuels. I was following Kevin Samuels when he had like six thousand, like Mm -hmm. like six thousand members. I remember when he was doing cologne thing, he Mm -hmm. actually got me on like the whole um Chanel Blue, um Invicta, like a lot of my colognes, I actually got it from from Kevin Samuels. So, like, for me, he definitely made me push my career. Like, hey, don't be content where you are. Like, yeah, you're part of the six-figure club, but you could be more – you could get into that 200 club, that 300 club, that 400 club. So that's something I really appreciated. And understanding your value as a man. Like, you know, you you, black men, you have value. We're so ingrained and taught all our life that we ain't shit, you ain't about shit, you ain't going to do shit. And it's like you hear that so much that you forget that, you know what, you're a man that could actually contribute to the greater good. And that's what Kevin Sammy brought into the table, man. Um, I agree pretty much through his delivery. I mean, I know some people were kind of salty about his delivery. I have no issue with the delivery because I'm a type of person. I'm very direct. If you're fucking up, I'm going to let you know you're fucking up. And I'm not going to sugarcoat things because I want you to do the same. If Bacchus, if you see me, I'm fucking up. Rob, you see me fucking up. I want you to take me aside and say, you know what, Kanal, you fucking up. I have a higher expectations of you, and this is what I expect. The thing is, people don't want to be be held accountable and set and put expectations on. So it's like, hey, you want me, okay, you want me to marry you and take care of you, but yet you don't want to do nothing for me. You don't want to look good for me. 
You don't want to like it's like the fuck. It's like I'm I'm giving you all I'm giving you my all, but yet I get little in return from you. Yeah. And that's the mindset of today's modern women, man. And it's just like people always tell me, like, you know, why you're not dating here in the States? Like, well, I don't see anything I like. I, I like it's been a while in the buckets, no man. We go out sometimes in Atlanta. Do I I haven't seen a girl that made me fucking turn my head? Like, I haven't seen a girl like, damn, I want to get to know her. And I've been here for two years now. I have not come across a woman that made me feel like, yo, I want to get to know this woman here in Atlanta. It's all like everyone cookie cutter, the, the same body type, BBL body type, the long eyelashes, the, 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 the long fingernails, it, the, the long weave. It's just, dude, I, nothing doesn't turn me on. But when I get on that plane and I go overseas, when I see a lady walking, you know, walking on the street with sandals and pants and shorts on, dude, it's like, man, I can see, I can feel her energy. I can feel her energy. She's smiling. I'm like, damn, she just smiled. And brothers, don't take offense, man. They smile at you, smile back, because we're not used to getting that here. You smile at a sister here in the States, man. Like, why? Like, why you smile at me? For? Like, God yeah, nah, damn. Nah, nah. A, sister, a sister smile at me in Atlanta. I'm like, all right. I got forty dollars. What you got? Like, nah, nah, ain't never, ain't never something good, bro. It, that's just me, though. Honestly. I mean, it, it's just like I, I think sometimes we forget that you know we need to turn off that 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 ultra competitiveness, and a lot of women here in, the, in this country don't do that. They always feel like they feel they need to compete at all time, even at a conversation. You can be at a bar having a conversation with a lovely lady. She feels the need she has to win the conversation. And I'm like, it, it doesn't have to be this way. It's like, it's not you know what? Serious. Yeah, I'm not that serious. Relax. I'm just trying to have a drink and clear my head. And here you come with yeah, some dumb. And, I mean, you look, know, I've, I've been on a few. Shape. Yeah, out of shape, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Uh, I've been on a few dates. I've been on a few dates where here in Georgia and here in Florida, too, where it's like, I felt like I was being interrogated. Like, she had a list of questions that I had to make sure I answer all those questions accordingly. So she could judge me. Granted, I probably make three times more than her. Hmm. But guess what? Because I'm not driving that Range Rover or that Mercedes Benz. Oh, he ain't bought nothing. And that's how it is in the states. But when you're overseas, man, they don't look at that. I, I'm walking. Yes, I mean, I may, they may see a potential gringo, but at the same time, they don't know what I made. They don't know anything. The majority of the time, they can't even speak English. But what they do is they see a masculine man in front of them. They're gonna give that man. They're gonna give that man that level of respect. The thing about overseas is these women grow up knowing and understanding that you need a man in mm -hmm. your life so now, how to treat a mm -hmm. man. Now those women stateside are so far in between. It's the same. It's the same opposite of a woman that wants. A millionaire, faithful, God fearing, uh, you know, only want one woman. They're out there, but they're so far in between. The opposite is us finding a woman who knows that a man is required or needed to to give them the life that they want. So we were working on it both ways. But the good thing is for the brothers in our groups, we have the cheat code. Um, mm -hmm. of course. Not all of us are going to act accordingly, but we can only be responsible for ourselves and the people we choose to hang around. If you hang around Pookies and Ray Rays, they're going to mess up your rep quick, fast, mm -hmm. and hurry. So, you know, I, all I say is like, keep exploring, keep enjoying yourself, keep growing, mm -hmm. keep doing what you feel is best for yourself and the community and uh, uh, separate yourself. One, one of the things I like to say, when I go overseas, if it's more than three, I would not be. Like it's more than three brothers I see in the club. Nope. <laughs> I'm gone. Okay. Yeah, we, I mean, we went, to club, we went to the club in, in Cartagena and I was like, damn shit, I'm back in Atlanta. What was the whole point of this? Like, fuck this. Yeah. I'm going to the club. Yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, Man, I got I got I got a real quick uh real I just came back not too long ago and uh like you said, just that whole they hold this position. Uh, it's totally different. Now I'm standing in this Airbnb. I'm in Colombia, and I met this lady. From a platonic standpoint, she gave me the most sweetest and most peaceful smile I've I've ever seen and felt in a long time. Just from a platonic uh 
standpoint. And, right. Yeah, I mean, it, it blew my mind. And every time I saw this lady, she diligently working, sweeping, cleaning out a pool. And I think, Canal, I talked to me, you talked about this yeah. uh, a few weeks back, man. I mean, and it blew, it blew my mind because just from, you ever met a woman, that personality was, her aura was so sweet, you were, you instantly attracted to her? Yeah. It blew yeah. my mind. You yeah, know, it blew, yeah. it blew my mind, man. So I'm seeing her every day cleaning up, sweating, sweating, sweating. See her one day, she got sunblock on. And the next day, she ran out of sunblock. I said, well, hey, Alejandra, where's your sunblock? She said, well, it's real expensive. And uh, I said, well, how, how expensive is it? She said, well, 50,000 pesos, I think like 12 or 13 bucks. I go back in my room. I start eating breakfast going by my day. I thought about it. I said, let me go get this, this chick 50,000 pesos. <laughs> Man, I gave this lady 50,000 pesos. She bust out crying. Just uh -huh. the whole level of, of appreciation, and then she and she's like a nice seven, but her aura <laughs> made it to like an eight and a half. You know what I mean? Because I was thinking once I transition out there, like totally, because that's my plan. I would like to have a woman with a personality and just a spirit like spirit like that. You know what I mean? And this, I mean, this is we only speaking, you know, a little English, a little Spanish, but just man, they hold this position is different, man. But it blew my mind how touched. And then level of appreci uh, appreciation that this woman had, man, for twelve bucks, hell in the hell in the states they want to go to Paris on uh, Paris for lunch and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> and they shit. might call you back, maybe they yeah. might text you back within the first twenty four hours. Like, nah, man, look, yeah. I mean, I mean, go where you're appreciated, thing is, not where you're tolerated. That that well, was always well, my biggest thing. There you go, Bacchus. Because again, as black men. We've been ingrained that we ain't shit, we ain't buy shit, we ain't gonna do shit. We've heard this so many times. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, but I'm it's just like when when, <laughs> when, 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 when you have your own race of people telling you this, when I mean, they think very low of you, and it's just like you feel like, well, this is like the only thing I could, you know, that's the only thing I can mount to. It's like when you see your, your, your own group of women are uplifted more than the men, that's a problem. And when a black man decided to get on the plane and go to another country, he, he finally feels appreciated because he understands, like, yeah, even though, yes, he's a gringo, no matter what, yes, we are gringo, but just to feel like, hey, you know what, I don't have to keep this, 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 uh, this protection on all day. It gets tiring, man. Yeah. That's why a lot of us be fucking dying with heart attacks and shit. We stress the fuck out. Yeah. So for us, when we go overseas to these countries, like, you know, of course, the Brazil, the Columbia's, and the DRs, this is our chance to let go. Let it go. Yeah, and for that week, oh, we will spend money just to, if someone makes us smile and happy, we'll we fuck go. with you. There we go. That's yeah. it. Man, yeah. Because, yeah. I realize because, what the, uh, the big thing is, is the fact that it, we have this opportunity to go these places and do these things. Unfortunately, our counterparts do not. Ah. Ding, 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 Unless they're going to Jamaica and getting D down, which is fine. Go ahead. <laughs> but it, it, they, there's no real place for a sister. Let's let's say a 28 year old sister with her PhD and making 150 a year with her dog and all that, living in Buckhead, Atlanta. If she can't find nobody. Where's she gonna go? Like really, honestly, got truth. She doesn't have that option. She can't. She, she might be able to go someplace, but she ain't really going. No. She really going to feel it. So I think that's what really makes it mad is the fact that we can go someplace, but they can't. So then, as a result, they try to shame you, right? Right. Crazy. And and that's why I post. Like I said, I try to do the tour, the tourism. You know, like and the, the gorgeous women just to icing on the cake, man. Like it I said, because I like to get out. And, and, and learn about the culture and stuff. And that's why I post some of the really nice photos. And, and I'm getting better because I didn't, didn't take a lot of pictures for a while, but I really post on my timeline on some of these social uh, media platforms and let them really actually see. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then one chick was like, she like, man, are you a retired? You always on vacation. I'm like, shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's that's exactly what I was shooting for because we have to show them yeah. We have fucking options. You know, this is this is our life, man. And you got yeah. some brothers that they travel out uh, every month, every three weeks. I have brothers that he likes. I'm ex-military, so I know brothers that's retired out there. They have wives. 
you know, Afro Latino, you know, the Paisas. Look, you know, some in Medellin. You know what I mean? I mean, we just it's out for us to grab and take it, man. We have to cherish this, man. I mean, seriously, dude. Because as soon as I get my numbers and everything lined up for me, I'm gone. <laughs> I'm working on my visa right now. You know what I mean? I'm gone, dude. Chuck yeah, who, up the deuces. <laughs> yeah, man, man, who, 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 who don't want to go to Colombia or, or, or like Dominican or Panama and eat real organic fruit, work out all day? Like I'm operating a chemical plant, man. So now I work shift work, so I don't really get sleep. Every time I go to Columbia, man, I'm in, I'm the most happiest and I'm at the most peaceful state. I've always, you know, I've been especially with this last trip and meeting mm-hmm. that, that lady that that it, it appreciated that fifty thousand pesos. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. like I said, bro, let, let's do this. Let's hit the gas, all gas, no brakes for brothers that's trying to do the right she thing. Got, reach one, put, teach one. You yeah. know, and, and stay away from the and, and stay away from the dummies. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, um. Uh, let me let me try and chime in. My bad, fellas. I'm kind of late coming into the uh, chat good. or whatever. Um, I mean, I kind of feel like there's a lot going on, man. Um, like we're shamed for a lot, you know. Um, and I think it's coming from both sides. It ain't just the women, man. Mm. You know, I've been looking at uh a lot of these posts as far as just this whole Kevin Samuels thing, and you see dudes chiming in. Um. <laughs> You know, pretty much taking a side or, you know, uh, there was a post, I guess, last week talking about or even a YouTube video talking about you could get a chick here for thirty dollars in a bag of rice. And you got dudes over here oh, yeah. confirming that's the shit. That's you know what I'm saying? Man. I'm like, what's that shit all about? You know, yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff kind of throws me off. Um, you got the Derek Jacksons of the world trying to cater to these chicks in the state side. And, you know, it, it's just all bad, man. And, you know, I kind of agree with Brother Keno. You know, you go out with a chick in the States, it's like you're being put on an interview right away. You know, as, as far as being uh, overseas, things happen more organically. You know, you could build off of that. You know, uh, you get to learn each other more organically. You know, in the state side, it's a job interview straight up. You know, and a lot of the time it's just them trying to come up on dinner dates and shit like that. You know, um, you got the whole catch-22 to where you got – you know, black families, there's a lot of single parents, a lot of uh, a lot of people that come up in single uh, households. And then you got the other side that came up with uh, with men in their family as far as their fathers. So, you know, the first thing a woman learns in the States is the first uh, the first man you love is your father. You know, so what if they didn't have that at the same time? They're trying to tell you what a man is based on whatever, you know, whatever assumptions they have that they came up with. And, you know, they have this newfound freedom to wear. You know, they get paid all this money or whatever, and, they, you know, they got their whole equality thing going, but it clouds their head at the end of the day to where, you know, a, a household still needs to be uh, led by a man, in my opinion. And, you know, women just don't get that state side as opposed to being overseas to where that's kind of like understood, you know, even if they didn't come up with a father in their household, because a lot of these chicks in Columbia and DR, they, they, they haven't been around, you know, their fathers their whole life. But they understood that it takes a man to run a household still, you know, that's still instilled in them. So, I mean, I just think it's a bad thing. You know, we're, we're dealing with some sad times, man. Um, I've been out of the state for 18 months, man. And, wow. you know, I've, I've felt free as fuck being away from that shit, you know, uh, especially seeing the shit with Kevin Samuels last night. As far as all the commentary, I don't even want to come back, man. I don't want to come back to that shit. Wow. You know what? Um, I was in a conversation this, this uh, morning on Facebook. This girl had a post that says, "You know, when a woman says she, when a woman says that she doesn't need a man, is she's you know, is she's wrong for saying that?" I said, "Fuck yeah, she's wrong for saying that." Have you ever heard a man ever fix his mouth and say that he doesn't need a woman? Never, never, ever, ever. And the thing is, like for her, she tried to defend her reason of why a woman should say that. I'm like. You know, like why like why the fuck I want to be with someone that actually says that in a relationship that tells me that for one you're not loyal because any situation where that happened you you gone and two it's like you you you're still in that me mentality so for me I'm trying to be on this us mentality you still in that me mentality so for me I, I can't fuck with somebody's on that man and that's why I was like I mean, as much as as much as I try to get, you know, I try to date here in the states, man, it's just I get turned off every minute, man. I'm like, wow, 
this is what it is now. And I'm 44 years old, guys. I'm 44 years old. So my tolerance level is zero. And I'm meeting, and you think, you know, you meet women in their 30s and their 40s, they probably think a certain way, bro. It gets worse. Yeah, I mean, it's n- it's not fruitful at all, man. And, you know, take it, you know, I lived in Miami just like you, uh, brother. Yeah. You know, I know you from Miami. I lived in Miami. You know, that's definitely not the motherfucking spot to try and settle down <laughs> and meet somebody. Um, it's just nothing fruitful in the States, in my opinion, man. Um, everybody has their own mentality to where, where I guess we're on this individual thing as the word men still want to build, build families. I don't think chicks necessarily want to build the same, you know, like they got theirs, but they still want ours at the same time. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you can't have equality. You want equality, but you want yours to be yours. I, I don't get that whole concept that that women have these days in the States. And one thing too, I see a lot of black men in full fledged relationships overseas, like happily, relationship like happy relationships where they're with their girlfriend or, or with their wife and they pretty much okay and they think you know every black man's out there chasing at the pros and it's not the case man a lot of black men are actually in relationships overseas and a lot of us are actually married so it's just like this whole narrative that you know we're out there chasing one thing 24 7 granted i mean there are some guys that's doing that but a lot of the older heads, man, they're okay having that wife, you know, that wife contributing, my, you know, have, huh? My my thing I, I never understood is the guys that are going elsewhere, the guys that are looking at other options, the guys that are, you know, expanding their horizon, are the guys you don't want. So why are you worried about where we're going to get what we can get? You don't want us any damn way for, for most of the one stateside. And even if you do want us, it's making it very hard for us to believe that. You feel that we must come in and take care of you while the other option for us is we come in and they take care of us. We're very, we're simple. Men have been saying it forever. We we're extremely simple of what we need and want. I want to ask y'all brother. I want to ask y'all brothers a question, man. Because I mean, okay. uh, we're in the age of so we're in the age of social media with YouTube, TikTok. I mean, do you think we, uh, as men, um, and you know, you like you said, the Pookie and Ray Rays, do you think we contribute just as much as the women to to this whole narrative? Because I mean, I'm honestly still in that way with a lot of the shit I see in social media. Um, you know, I don't share a lot of shit. You know, I, I don't you, even want to elaborate I don't a little bit more on that question. I'm trying to figure, can you elaborate on that? What do you what, say that again? Broad, um, broad. I mean, I, I think, I think, you know, we contribute to that. You know, you look at, um, I did a little experiment in uh, our WhatsApp groups, you know, um, like you could go on YouTube and search how to find a, a black woman in, a, in another country. Now you look at that shit up for a woman, you won't see anything about that. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I think we kind of contribute, not us, but I mean, like, I think there's a contribution to the narrative from men, you know, as far as the content they're putting out on social media. I mean, I know dudes as content creators and they're, they're getting paid off of it. But I mean, I think at the same time, we got to have some some responsibility as far as what we're putting out there. Um, you know, I, I won't share. I don't share anything as far as me going out dating or dealing with females. I just post scenery, you know, yeah. different stuff I'm visiting. But I mean, when you could go on YouTube so, and see hundreds of videos I, about how to find a woman here and there compared to our counterparts. That's a lot of, of who's talking? Hey Bob, because you're breaking up. Hey, uh, real quick, uh, let me get somebody else joined the chat. You know what I mean? Um a Terrell. Um, so I just want to make sure everybody get a chance to speak. If you there. Brother, um, can you say something? Because your mic is muted, so you got to unmute yourself. Hey, well, what's going on, fellas? Right, nothing much, man. Speak your mind, brother. Oh, man. Uh, how things is basically on there nowadays out here on the same, man. It's just everybody for themselves, and it's just, it's just a wild, wild west out here nowadays. You know, just dating, education, status, everything on far as levels, what people are looking for. Mm-hmm. You got to be kind of introduced to somebody. I the same way I would say overseas too. As far as Tinder, I would say just you got to link up with people who kind of see where you're going and where you align with and work like that. Because when you, because when you out here nowadays, it's just a different flow, man. Like 
the, the whoever the ladies got her ear as far as um who she looks up to, they're gonna be counting everything you do and counting your dollars, how you look, everything, trying to get the best deal for them instead of the best deal they work for both of y'all. I, I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. Hey, um, no excuse. Can you actually respond to B um question in regards to like the whole YouTube already you know the, the how YouTube's promoting all the wrong things versus promoting all the right content of traveling? Uh I mean I, I mean I feel them. I mean I was part of the I was part of the people that thought we had a code not to share not to put certain things out, but you know, some brothers realize that they could capitalize off of it. And some brothers are able to live and travel off of YouTube. So, at the, you know, I mean, as much as I, you know, wish they didn't contribute to to what's out there at the same time, it's like they not, ain't nobody else putting money in their pockets because at the same time, I'm looking, I've, I've, I regret, I, I regret trying to find, to a certain to a certain respect, I regret trying to follow the code because I got years. I put I put I put I put so much information on Facebook and what that I could have been putting my energy into YouTube. You know what I mean? So so me trying to so I feel like me trying to appease certain brothers by not by keeping stuff a secret. I feel like I hurt myself too because I could have been putting stuff out there. Cause the guys that's doing it now, like they, you know, what I mean, I've been, you know, a lot of us been doing it be way before they've been doing. It, yeah. You know, and so I mean, I hear what be saying, but at the same time, it's like, ain't nobody putting no money, ain't nobody, ain't nobody putting money in, in our pockets at the same time. I mean, I, I kind of felt like we came up under a different code. You know, what I'm saying, um, I felt like there there was a time, like you know. Uh, for instance, my first time going to Columbia, the first person I reached out to was Brother Keenall. He was one of the first cats out there back in what 2015, 2016. Yeah. <laughs> there wasn't yeah. no there wasn't no brothers out there. You know, when I first started going, I'd be the only one on the plane. You know, um, <laughs> I know, I know. You, you go through Fort Lauderdale, you go through Fort Lauderdale now. It's fucking crazy as hell, bro. Um, so I mean, I just kind of feel like we um we still have a responsibility, man. Um. You know, there there's certain elders in other groups, you know, even in our WhatsApp groups. Um, you know, that they they just taught us a different way, man. And it, it just wasn't focused on on the content that you see on YouTube. You know, we was able to learn in different ways. And I just think that there's gotta be some way we put out a, a public code, man. I mean, I think that's the real thing, that's the real issue. There's gotta be some kind of set standard code, a code of conduct for brothers. You know what I'm saying? Especially with all these groups we have, we, it's something that can be put together. You know you what know, it is? Um, okay. let, let, me finish, let me finish real fast. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Like, like, you know, um, I, I tried to put, extend myself out there, the, the school new newbies coming in and new guys that are traveling. And, you know, I get some of the most weirdest questions and I'm just like, is spawning from a lot of this YouTube content. It's not like genuine travel or trying to experience you know, something for real, you know, we all try are trying to, uh, we, you know, we all date outside the country, of course, but I'm just meaning like some of the, the intentions are just real malicious, you know what I'm saying? And th that's the kind of stuff that comes to me. And I'd be like, I just want to give up on trying to school and, you know, teach brothers the right way, you know? So I'm just like, how do we combat that? You know, with all the bad, uh, the bad information that's going out there because the women are looking at it just as much as us. Um, and, and not that that's really an issue because they're going to come to their to their uh, preconceived notions anyway. It's been happening since the fucking 90s and uh, when Brazil was exposed. So, so I mean, me, um, like, how do we combat that? Let me let me let me, let me just let me um, respond to that real quick. So, B, who who do you address? You know, I mean, I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use uh, Zoe. I'm going to use Zoe as an example. You know, what I mean, he, he you know, what I mean, I, fu I fucks with Zoe, but a lot of people you know, criticize what he put out on YouTube, you know, Barber, Barber World. Now, what would you say to him? He like, okay, this is, you know, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm, you know, I'm at 50,000 subscribers. You know what I mean? I'm, you know, I'm making whatever he may be making from his YouTube revenue. How, how, how can he stick to a code and still meet his, his bottom line? And then second, who do you, who do who do who is really the who is really to to look at? 
the creator or the consumer because all these platforms that that really that really show you know what a lot of us do did or done is really get the it's really the consumers is driving it like they they can't help people they can't help what content people like you know what i mean unless you unless you unless guy guys have to support the kinos of the world the black man travels of the world guys got to support that just as much as they support Zoe or checking effects or Flyboy or who or all the other guys. Yeah, yeah. I, I could I could definitely agree with that, man. Um, like it, it just seems like a lot of it is uh like niche marketing almost. You know what I'm saying? But that seems to be what grabs uh, our attention. You know what I'm saying? Or a lot of guys' attention. You know, um, shit. Right. I didn't know. What the, I didn't know what the fuck Mongreen was when I first started traveling. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> saying, that's, that, that's something I had to learn. Or you know, pick up uh, on the way, you know what I'm saying. So I mean, it, it's a lot of uh, I guess brothers are being introduced to, um, I guess to the other side first, as opposed to just enjoying experiences for what it is. You know, I, I still travel for the experience to this day. You know, uh, you know, I, I think about uh, the 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 voyagers of, of the past. You know, um, that 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 still inspires me to travel, and not necessarily the shit that we see on YouTube as far as content. Well, I mean, keep in mind, like right now, the hot, like the the most popular thing in tra on black travels is those those walking videos, the videos walking through Cartagena, Sasua, San Domingo, like the the usual spots. And of course, they they always keep the cameras at a low angle where they can get the ass shots. And that's what those ones are getting tons of views. Now there are exceptions to like Ace Live; he's doing his thing. You know, you know, Zoe's doing his thing. Um, because they're producing real content, but most a lot of the travel YouTubers, man, they're not really providing real content besides walkthroughs and talking points. And I think a lot of us need to do a better job in showing real content. Like when we go on these trips, man, take out the camera out and record your experience. And that's what I've been doing. Right now, I'm approaching 600 subscribers. I got 55 videos. And the amount of content that I'm producing, you know, it's not as much, but I always say, you know, I'm not about trying to like become a YouTuber. I'm, and I always make it clear I'm not a YouTuber. I'm just sharing my experiences with the world. And guess what? Do you know the majority of my subscribers are from, from are from Latin America? Most of my subscribers that watch my videos are from Latin America based on my uh, you know, reporting. And yeah, because, because brothers want to see trash. Yeah, and that's yeah. the thing—they want to see trash. You know. Yeah. I that's agree. what we, that's what we attracted to. So I don't <laughs> know. I don't know what to to how to say to come back. What is the right answer? What is the wrong answer? You know, is it is it a, is it a something that's a, you can you know dot the eyes and cross the t's with? Man, that's a hard pill, man. That's. Man, that take a almost a discussion within itself, a discussion within a discussion, like a panel board, man, because you got so many brothers that has depth and you got so many brothers that shallow. How do you fucking how do you combine them? You know what I mean? I think Zoe, um, Bubble World, he does a great job in combining that. Um, especially when he does his his videos with the ladies. I mean, he kind of add that eye candy touch, but also he does a lot of historical stuff, a lot of like you know, did you know experiences uh videos? So he, he's doing a great job. Of course, Ace Live is doing his thing. But majority of the people that's watching those type of filth videos, they're not travelers. Yeah. Okay. Let's be real. Most real travelers are not watching walkthrough videos because we've done it before. Like we we've right. been to those places already. Right. So you got anything to add uh Terrell? I know you was unmuted for a moment. Yes, um, so you producing a whole different type of content. It's coming from a black male sharing your experience traveling, adventure exploring. You're coming from a whole different type of way, the type of content you're producing. And it's going to organically grow, but it's like you said, it's for a mature crowd. Mm -hmm. Stuff that's popular right now is just like a fad. It's going to fade off. It's on some of the videos. You see somebody with a video that's what, from low, low shots, you know, sneaking, sneaking and geeking almost in a sense. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not real content. It's just a little, little beat that they didn't got from SoundCloud, let it play. Just, <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? It, of course, that's what's getting abused because look at the thumbnail. 
That's what right. they're driven by. But it's not even saying nothing. It's like an eight minute video, nine minute video, four minute video of basically nothing. And you showing mm -hmm. a, a, your journey as a man going to different countries and exploring outside and inside areas that they don't touch on, like food, culture, language, just a whole different thing. You just got to give it some time for it to catch to catch on. So that's why I keep talking to you. Hey, man, just put out some content. Whatever you got on your mind, just keep driving. It's going to catch a market. We can't worry about who's not a part of the team. If they ain't on the team, they don't even matter because they're not helping you get to the goal, to the playoffs, championship, or whatever, to build a legacy. You just got to grow with the people who are going to grow with you. And I'll just say stick with that, my man. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, that's why I'm doing more of these podcasts. These podcasts is another way for me to share my experiences with, with other people. And again, all I'm doing is just passing the torch, man. Like, just like I was able to talk to B and get him up to speed with, with Columbia and other brothers within the network. That's all I want to do, man. And um, if, if, if I make money out of it, cool. If I don't, oh, well, I mean, I, I got a good profession under my belt where I'll be all right. <laughs> but overall, man, I just want to share my experience with the world and really just change what people see how black men travel. Because I get tired of people asking me, well, why do you travel? Why are you always going to the same country? Like, nigga, why are you always in my pocket? Like, I had this one girl. She literally asked me, well, how can you travel so much? I'm like, why are you so concerned why I'm traveling? I'm like, just following you, bro. Yeah, I'm like, that's kind of weird. Hey, you know, hey, and not to cut you off, KT. No, so good. you got to, you know, I mean, I think all travel bros got to look at this, man. You able to have the income, the finance to be able to travel. We look at our friends, family, people we know. You share your experiences. They ain't they not doing it. They not doing the traveling. And they not doing it. Even some of these guys in the groups, right? I think some of these groups that we scrubbed. Oh man, <laughs> y'all got global interest. There's some of the stuff they just so <laughs> amazing to admire that they just start hating on you. They start pulling you down. No matter what you post, whatever you do, they gonna shoot it down. So I think God just got to really like, man, the hate is really coming from other guys that look like you. They mad because they can't do what you do. <laughs> so it's just what it is. Everybody can go. Everybody can participate. It's just what it is. So think about this. You able to do some people can't. But you know what? The funny funny. Thing is, like, what I'm doing is not much. All I'm doing is just transferring. It's more than my... what they doing, though. It's more than what they doing. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah that's I the mean, root, root of it. Go ahead, B. Yeah, people always uh live vicariously through others. I mean, that happens a Bingo. lot, you know, many things. Yeah, man. I think the mo most of the hate that come from dudes is because they're not doing it. Exactly. <laughs> because I have homies hating on travel, and then when I finally got them on a trip with me, they all grin it, they grin it ear to ear. <laughs> because they watch it from the sideline. They don't like your picture, but they tell everybody what you're doing. I mean, I I, try, I made this comparison before. Um, like, imagine what we do uh, abroad, you know. Um, now, if, it were, if we were celebrities in the States, like a Floyd Mayweather or somebody like that, dudes that are millionaires, you know, they get applauded for doing that shit stateside. But because we're doing it abroad and trying to feel appreciated at the same time, you know, we get this uh, this outcast look upon us. So, I mean, it, it's kind of funny to me at sometimes, too. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's it's so easy, man. People try to make it more than what it is, or I, like a lot of these travel groups that want to book an agent. Like, what the fuck you need an agent for? Like, who use an agent nowadays? Like, a lot of <laughs> shit you could do is just go to Google Flight, Hotwire, Airbnb, and, and look for. Deals. Yeah, I mean TripAdvisor. If you want to see a tour, or some yeah, shit, you know, like TripAdvisor. why go through the streams? You know, like you could find out what to do in a, in a place just going going through TripAdvisor. You know, a simple Airbnb. Um, like you don't need a travel agent for shit these days. That that should be making <laughs> me laugh too. Well, I mean, I mean, it's great to see brothers traveling. It's great to see guys contributing and building overseas. And again, it, it kind of goes back to our original topic is changing that narrative is that a lot of black men are doing a lot of good in these countries, man, you know, and we're, we, we are high value. I'm sorry. We are. The fact that we're able to travel, live overseas and do the stuff that we're doing, that's set us apart, that's set us apart from, from other men. And, you know, all I want to do is just encourage more black men to travel, get your passport, go other places. If it means you going to Bahamas, 
Jamaica, Mexico, DR, go. Go see the world. There's so much to see and do out there. And also, too, if you're looking for love, you can find love overseas, man. As much as people want to downplay that shit, you can find it, man. Just don't do it with the pros. That's it. <laughs> that's, you know, that's my take on it. Uh, anyone else? I know it's about to be one o'clock. I want to close it out. Uh, any last statements from each of you guys? Yeah, I, I, I'll go first. Um, yeah, in the I, I, I heard that in the U.S., we are we are a country that speaks the least language and has the least passports out of a lot of countries wow. in first world countries. So we we're very ignorant to a lot of things, you know. Um, and then also, um, I didn't get to answer the question earlier about who's gonna you know who you know who's next in line to like carry the torch. But in my opinion, you know, I see Fresh and Fit on the rise, man. They they definitely red pill. They go hard. They got they got damn near just as many women that hate them as the hated Kevin Samuels, you know. Mm-hmm. And they almost had like seven hundred thousand clubs. Um, so uh, fresh and fit is definitely is definitely is definitely they definitely have the torch now as far as carrying that um, that masculine uh, message. So um, so that's pretty much what I got. You know, got. Okay. B, what about you, B? Um, I mean, I'm not a big follower of YouTube just because the um, you know, the, the content is kind of weird. So I kind of kind of gotta find my niches. So I'll start paying attention to more of these channels, man. And like I said, um, brother Keno, I appreciate what you're doing. You, uh, brother Akeen, you know, like that's the kind of shit I appreciate. So I mean, I'll definitely uh, give more support to y'all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I appreciate the love, brother. All right, Terrell, what do you think? Uh, I actually think no one is going to be able to do it. Uh, Kevin Samuels do it. No one else. I mean, MTR, as far as the, the content and how he market himself, I, I think you would be next up for any one of them, you know, and that's no doubt to the, the manager, but no one had the personality he did. That's why he blew up so fast. Yeah. That's why I look at, I look at you far as what you're talking about, it's a whole different way. Like I said, we're dealing with health. And just to see that he just passed away from health issues. Mm. So we got to help. I mean, what we, we look like traveling and going places and you got your health taken care of. And- well, you know what, though? Not uh, not to cut you off, though. I'm looking at some uh, reports. And, you know, people saying that it was due to maybe him using um, – Cocaine, fit. Now, I know I, I didn't want to get to that, but, but first, I'm just gonna stick with the health part of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I get what you're saying, though, Rob. I'm, I'm just saying, no excuse, my bad, though. I'm go, just gonna go, stick go with the health side. No, I got you. I got you. Cause, no, because I was because a lot of brothers died overseas, with, uh, yeah. uh, uh, related to sex, drink, yeah, the blue pills, yeah, you know. So that's all I was gonna say. But you go ahead, yeah, but well, you're right, but but still. You know, like a couple of brothers, we lost in the group, and even from Charles Tyler, it was a health related issue. So we got to get our blood checked and going up. So for us to have finances good and doing everything, traveling, running up, hiking, salsa dancing, whatever you want to do, you still want to have good health. That's just the main thing. So that's what uh, Keen All is focused on is health, traveling, the whole overall experience, just from a, you know, small island. Don't get wrong, fish and fit doing the thing, but we're talking about from a black. Caribbean, African, you know, descent that we're coming from. It's I don't think Fresh, Fresh and Fit ain't really speaking for our crowd. So yeah, that's and, what I'm looking. So I, that's why I say you would have it before you know. Well, Mo said. No, we talk about that's in America present day, like we are living in. I don't think nobody manifest who who got the personality to carry. So I want to say something about that, but I'm gonna let I'm gonna let our man fin- uh, say his final thoughts, and I and I'll chime in on what you just said. Um, man, like I said, I don't, me, myself, man, I work, we working a lot, man. I work extremely, a lot of hours, man. So I don't have a lot of time to, uh, look at a lot of YouTube. I don't know what's next, but all I know that that brother word and that brother voice is out there in the world, man. And it is echoing, you know what I mean? And with his passing, I think it's going to even explode even more because that narrative is out there. Mm -hmm. So whatever brother that happens to sit in his place. 
or brothers that happen to sit in this place. It might not just be one brother, it might be three or, or two. You know, I'm just happy that they're able to carry the torch, man, and just let's keep traveling, bro. I'll leave you next week. I'm ready. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> one thing I want to say, what based on what Terrell was saying, um, I want us no excuse, Steve Barkis, like all the the, tr- the black man travel YouTubers. We have a, a very unique space. We don't need to be part of that Kevin, you know, Kevin Samuel type of crowd. There's a lot of brothers out here that's eager to learn what's outside the U.S. Mm-hmm. And I think it's our responsibility to educate them. And it's just like, you know, we're in a special niche area where, you know what, we could create our, we, we, we could become our own Kevin Samuel within our own space. Mm-hmm. Because again, a lot of men are looking for information around traveling, about expat life, business overseas, health and wellness. And that's what, and that's the angle that I want to take. I want to grab other YouTubers just like myself, where we could talk about these things. Like, I don't want to be part of the manosphere. I mean, even though we are part of the manosphere, I don't want to be focused on black relationships. Like, you know what? Fuck that. If your love is in Cuba, if your love is in South Africa, go out there and explore. If your business is in Dominican Republic or your business is in Spain, go ahead and open that business. That's the type of conversation I want to have. And also, too, I want to talk about our health and wellness. We as black men, we're not taking care of ourselves, man. I mean, for heart, for, for Kevin Samuel to get a heart attack, it's just like, that speaks volume. And of course, Charles Tyler and, and, and some of our other pioneers in the, within this space have died during their travels. We need to address the health and wellness issues within our own community. And I think we need to talk about that because... I mean, you guys see it. You see guys overseas weighing 300 pounds wobbling across the airport. That shit ain't cool. True. I mean, true. They, I'm sorry. So, I mean, my, my take is like, listen, we got a niche space where a lot of our black men want to get married. A lot of our black men want to start a business overseas. A lot of black men want to live overseas. We we have that platforms. From no excuse, Steve Bacchus to to um, Zoe um, um, uh, to Ace Live to actually share that because again, there's a lot of brothers out there yearning to see what's outside the U.S. and we have the keys to give it to them for them to see it. And that's that's my niche, man. I have no desire to be part of the whole O'Shea, you know, O'Shea what um, Duke Jackson um, manosphere or. You know, fresh and fit. Fuck all that shit, man. I want to stay in this little little niche area. I'm not gonna be a hundred thousand YouTube uh, subscriber type of guy. I might if I have one thousand, but but my message make an impact. I'm alright with that. And it's just like you know, we have a special niche of people where people are actually eager to learn more about living overseas, marrying overseas, and starting business overseas, investing overseas. And let's do it. I mean, no excuse. You doing your thing in South Africa. Sharing about you know purchasing land and you know buying property and you know starting business and even finding a wife. It's a lot of black men out there that that's, that want this type of information. We and the thing is, we all experts. All of us right now, all between four of us, we're experts. So it's just like you know, why not stay within our niche, man, and just focus on that? Fuck the whole manosphere thing. Fuck the whole you know trying to like educate you know. Between the black women and the black men, fuck all that shit, man. We we checked out already. We checked out a long time ago. Yep. So it's just like for me, for me to get in that conversation between what's wrong with today black relationship, I already checked out. I'm I'm done. I'm gone. Yeah, me, bro. Yeah, me. So it's just like for me, to be honest, I could care less. I'm just keeping it real. I could care less. Yeah, because we're not trying to build that community. Like you said, ain't no more community. It's nothing but wasted time. And like God bless, you know, Kevin Samuels, but that's where him and I differed. He was at the point trying to rebuild it. Like you said, we already checked the fuck out. So it's no point. We're not dating too much. You know, I might leave a little line in the water, catch a little something, but I mean, shit, we checked out already, man. I ain't trying what community. Save what? I already went through the court system. What? Save what? How many times I gotta go through, right? Save what? Yeah, and and the thing is, like, I mean, Rob. I just went to your I went to your wedding. Your wedding was beautiful, man. Beautiful wedding. And you married to a sister. A black woman. But the thing is, most ignorant folks, they don't realize that, you know, there are black folks outside the US. Mm-hmm. So it's like for me, I can still marry a sister. It doesn't have to be here. 
And trust me, I'm dating a Dominican. I, I, I tested her ass a long time ago. I said, what are you? She said, I'm black. All right, cool. Be- <laughs> good answer. So I, I ain't want to hear it. Oh, I ain't black. I'm Dominican. Nah. She made it. <laughs> I guess hey. I was testing her. She was like, now nah, I'm black. <laughs> the, the, the passport, you know, the passport bro space or whatever you want to call it, travel bro space, is, is, is going to grow because especially after a lot of men seeing this vitriol for women, they like, mm-hmm. oh, they, they, they like, I'm checking out. They, they, I don't, I don't see comments like, man, it's time to get my passport. So, and that's why, you no, know, uh, Rob, I mean, even B, Terrell, I mean, this is the platform we have. We have a special platform with, with, with real time receipts. We are travelers. We sh- we have tons of story to share and educate the next man. Like, listen, get your passport. Right now, I got my trainer, my boxing trainer. I'm constantly talking. I'm putting shit in his ear like, yo, get your passport. Get your passport. And what I may just do instead of him, you know, st- instead of instead of paying him one one time, I may just use that money to get him his passport. Hmm. And it's just like, yo, we have a special platform to educate black men and why they should why they should explore their option, either be relationship business or even expat life because again a lot of us are dying for no apparent reason and we don't need the extra stress man if you could get out for the weekend go you don't need to spend two weeks outside the country i mean if if you don't have the time great if you do go but sometimes three days is all you need to be charged man i've taken a lot of short trips man where all i needed was three days Mm -hmm. and i came back i realized you know what i need to get the fuck out of here so i'm gonna grind a lot harder but guess what? It's good to take that break. And just say, uh, I'm mad. You about to take your break. You know, you're about to go back to Colombia or Brazil. Shit, you grind and you go enjoy your money. Yes, sir. Own it. So uh just want to say thank you, guys. I know we kind of went over an hour, man. Just want to say thank you. This is the second episode. I want to have more of these conversations. We're going to get better. But also, too, I want to do more. Um, I, I like to uh, do po- more partnership with, with Rob. No excuse. And definitely with other YouTubers. And again, I think we should need to focus on our own little space, man. Fuck all the other shit, man. I mean, that's my take on it. We, we I mean, can't uh, save everybody. I guess that's one funny. thing I, I want to tie in before we get going. Um, I mean, I, I, we got to realize this all, it all ties hand in hand between, you know, all platforms. I mean, we can't just focus on the YouTube content. You know, it starts within, you know, a lot of us got started in, uh, Shit, I can't even think of the damn Brazil groups we had back in the day with Charles. Oh, yeah, I can't even remember that. the name. So I mean, like, we gotta we gotta clean up all our platforms, brothers. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just want to leave it at that. All platforms, we gotta we gotta be just. We gotta be righteous, man. I agree. I totally agree. Well, guys, thank you so much. Uh, we're gonna conclude this conversation. We talked about you know we talked a, a whole variety of topics, <laughs> but uh, it's kind of cool that we have a two part video, part one and part two. And uh, we'll definitely upload it and um, stay tuned for the next one, man. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, guys. And thank you. No excuse. All right. No.